I'm Alex, this is Code Along with Alex, and let's manage secrets using a configuration file in Kubernetes. So before you begin, you need a Kubernetes cluster and a configured kubectl command line tool. We're using the killer coda Kubernetes playground because it's super convenient and it handles all that configuration for us. We don't have to uh, deploy a local cluster or anything. It's just great. So use whatever platform you prefer, but today we'll use Color Coda and it'll be linked in the video description. So previously we uh, examined how to create secrets using Kubernetes secrets and or just the kubectl command line tool, but today we're gonna use configuration files. And so let's dive in. So you can define a secret in a manifest file in either JSON or YAML format, and then create the object that from that. So the secret resource contains two maps, data and string data. And the data field is used to store arbitrary data encoded into base64, like we saw before. And the string data field is provided for convenience and allows you pr to provide the same data as unencoded strings. So uh, I guess less, or not less secure, just different. Um, so the keys of data and string data must consist of alphanumeric characters, dashes, underscores, or periods. And so the following example stores two strings in a secret using the data field. So we're going to use our echo command, pass the dash n flag, and then let's write admin, and then let's encode that into base64. Now let's do the same thing with a string that might be used for a password. Awesome. And then pipe that into base64. Voila. So note that uh, serialized JSON and YAML values of the secret data are encoded as base64 strings. New lines are not valid within these strings and must be omitted. So when using the base64 utility on Darwin and Mac OS, users should avoid using the dash B flag or dash B option to split long lines. Conversely, Linux users should add the option dash W zero to base64 commands or the pipeline base64 pipe tr dash d and a new line if the w option is not available so let's create a manifest i'm gonna create a file called secret.yaml in our local directory and I gotta use touch, not took. I don't know that took is a valid command. Okay. Now let's open that file with nano and paste in some valid YAML. So I'm copy pasting some values from my reference cheat sheet in the docs, which are linked in the video description, but I don't want to mess up with any indentation. You can see we're setting the API version to v1, the kind is secret, and then we're declaring some metadata with a subfield called my secret. The type is opaque, and then some data fields, namely the username, which is base64 encoded, and the password, which is base64 encoded. And if you notice, these are the same values that we created using the echo command previously. So the username is admin and the password is some strange uh, ordering of alphanumeric characters that we previously looked at. So let's save this file.
and let's apply the, the YAML in that configuration file to generate a secret. And to do that, we'll use kubectl apply, pass the dash F option, and then navigate to the locally created YAML file. And so you can see that our secret was created and it's called my secret. And if we want to verify that the secret was created, uh, I'd recommend navigating to the managing secrets using kubectl uh, tutorial or task that we did previously. And if you'd like, you can just briefly recollect that you can pass kubectl get secrets. And now you'll see that we have a secret called my secret. It's opaque and there's two data points in it. And if you'd like, you can also describe a specific secret. So we're gonna do the kubectl describe secret, my secret. And you can see a little more information namely that it has a password and a username field in the data field. All right. So now let's specify unencoded data when we're creating a secret. So certain scenarios, you may wish to use the string data field instead of the data field. So this field, the string data field allows you to put non-base64 encoded strings directly into the secret and the string will be encoded for you when the secret is created or updated. That's nice. So a practical example of this might be where you're deploying an application that uses a secret to store a configuration file, and you want to populate parts of that configuration file during your deployment process. Okay, yeah. So for example, if your application uses the following configuration file, uh, let's talk about the docs very briefly. We could store this configuration or this secret using the following definition. So let's do that. Actually, hold on. Um, let's pause for a second before we do that. All right, so I guess let's modify the secret we already have. I'm going to open it with nano and let's replace some of this information. So API version is the same, kind the same, metadata is the same, type is the same. And now let's delete this string data information. Oops. FGC. FG. Pake. Okay, string data. config.yaml API URL Let's pass a valid URL We'll call this HTTPS my dot api dot com slash api slash v1 let's create a username let's call it user password we'll likely have to replace these with a valid user name and password, but for now, we'll see if they accept this kind of boilerplate vibe. Okay. So now let's save this information using control X, Y, 
Now let's do I guess we got to recreate the secret. Let's do cube CTL apply dash F dot slash secret. And we've configured our secret. It was already created, so we've just configured it. So now let's get information about our secret and I'll put it as YAML and see what changes were applied. To do that, pass kubectl, get secret, my secret, and then we want the output to be YAML. Okay. So you can see we have the API URL, username and password. Very cool. Okay. So if you specify a field in both data and string data, the value from string data is used. So let's try that out. Let's open secrets.yaml one more time. And so now let's declare a data field and a string data field. I'm going to delete all this nonsense. It's not nonsense, but you know what I mean. Data, username, and we're going to do this in base64 encoding because it's the data field and that must have base64 encoded values. Next, let's do a string data field and we'll pass username. And so the value from the string data field will supersede the value from the data field which is good convention to be aware of. Save the contents of this file. Turn to our control plane. Now let's get information about our secret again using the get secret my secret and output to YAML. And then if we decode the value of our username, this should return administrator. So let's, let's try that out. So Hmm. Oh, I forgot to do apply. I just saved, I caught myself. So that's good. We saved it, but then we did not apply it. So we got to do cube CTL apply dash F secrets. So yeah, that's why it looks the same. Okay, we configured it now. And so now let's get the secret information in output YAML format. Okay. And you can see the username is now a shorter string. Let's copy that value and then let's decode it using the base 64 utility. And that can be done. Sorry, I'm just referencing my notes. <laughs> How do we do that? It's not on the top of my memory. What 
as a base. Or do we just do echo and pipe that into base 64 dash dash decode? Is this how you do it? Hey. So you can see it. Okay, let me make that a little cleaner. Pipe that into the code. And then let's do a new line. Echo. It's weird, man. Okay. I'll just echo a space instead. Okay, so you can see that our value in the YAML file uh, has decoded to administrator, which is what we expect. If we look at the value that we passed for um, the data field that was base64 encoded, let's see what that actually uh, decodes to. So I don't believe it'll be administrator. So echo, and just to refresh your memory, this is the value that we declared in the data field in our secret.yaml file. So the ywrta w4 equals. So let's decode that using base64. Okay, pipe this into base64 to code, and then just echo a space to make it a little cleaner for ourselves to visualize. It's thinking. Oh, I forgot to pass base64. Spelled it wrong. That's cool. Admin. Ooh, so interesting. So this is base64 encoded admin, whereas the other value is administrator. Subtle difference. It's interesting. Okay, cool. Now, let's edit a secret that we created using a manifest. And you can do that by modifying the data or the string data field in your manifest and then applying the file to your cluster. You can edit an existing secret unless it's immutable. So if we wanted to change the password from the previous example to birds aren't real, Kubernetes is infiltrated. Oh no. Okay, and let's encode the new password string. And birds are real. Birds aren't real. This is not what I was expecting today, but I don't know if I'm pleasantly surprised or confused, but I mean, we're all tech nerds, I guess. So now let's update our YAML file to have this be our password. So I want to open nano secrets or secret.yaml. So we're going to keep our username the same. Let's delete the string data field. And we're going to instead add a new subfield to the data field called password. Password, and this will be our base64 encoded text that represents birds aren't real. Save. And now let's apply the manifest to our cluster. Cube CTL apply dash F secret dot YAML. It's been configured. Sweet. And so now if we want to get information about that secret, we can do kubectl get secret, my secret, dash o, and then yaml for yaml output. You can see that the username and password are set. Let's Let's see what this 
decodes to just to verify that we're doing it right. So n. Base 64 dash dash decode. Furs aren't real. <laughs> That's, it looks better with this, the space so you can see how you can see it instead of it being smushed on control plane. Yep. And echo. Furs aren't real. And then the username should be admin, or it should be admin. No, it should be admin, I believe. Yeah, so birds aren't real. It's password admin is the username. And so we're just decoding the base64 encoded values in our YAML to verify that everything was working as expected. Awesome. Did a lot of tinkering, a lot of configuring. Let's do some cleaning up. So to delete this secret, just do delete secret, my secret. And now this should be deleted and we can verify that using kubectl get secrets, no resources found. So it's gone. Awesome. That was our quick little tour of configuring or managing secrets using a configuration file. That's one of the ways you can uh, apply secrets in Kubernetes. Previously, we covered with kubectl. Today was nice uh, using configuration files alongside kubectl. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm Alex. This has been Code Along with Alex, and I'll see you next time.